twenty nine eleven. And in case you've forgotten, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, "For I know the plans I have for you, plans not to harm you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future." Amen. What a blessing! Amen. Amen. And. We're so happy that you tuned in to watch us today at, with your host, Marisol Peltzer, and my husband, Dexter Peltzer. Amen. Here at OCN, your favorite 24-hour yes. Christian TV. Amen. And, you know, we're so excited. I'm very excited, Dexter, because I just was given the news that we have people that watch from all over the world. Amen. And I want to say hello to our brothers and sisters Amen. in the U.S., but Amen. also to our brothers and sisters in the Philippines, Amen. in Canada, in Thailand, Amen. in the Ukraine, Amen. in Spain, in Germany, in Brazil, in Russia. Amen. We love you. Amen. We Amen. love you. Amen. You know, it's so amazing. In Sudan, Amen. I was so excited. Amen. You know, we love you. We want you to tell your friends to Amen. watch us. Amen. Tell your friends to watch us. Amen. You know, it is so amazing what the Lord does. You know, had you start something by faith and the Lord grows it Amen. and grows it. And you know, the whole purpose that Jeremiah 29, 11 exists, this program, is to proclaim the gospel. And you can help us proclaim the gospel and have other people reach the plans and the purposes that the Lord has for them by telling them to watch our program. Amen? Help us and help us by praying for us. Amen. And, and, um, Amen. and you know, we love you very much and, and we want to hear from you. I have great news. We have a website. Amen. And it's shalom, shalom dot Org. Shalom, shalom org. I would like, and it would bless me tremendously, and Brother Dexter, if you would write to us. Tell us the Amen. testimonies. Amen. Tell us what you need prayer for Amen. so your brothers and sisters in the United States can unite with you, praying for your nation, for your family. Amen. And also, I have great news for you. You can partner with us financially by Amen. going to shalomshalom.org there, and, and you can partner with us as the Lord leads you. Amen. You know, and also you can go to us on Facebook, Dexter, Shalom TV Ministry. You can go there again to post your prayer requests, your testimonies, you know. We love you very much. And next week I'll say more countries that are watching us. Amen. But we love you. And I, I have a special heart for all the countries, from all the nations, because the Lord wants people from all the nations to worship him and praise him. So the nations together, we can all join in praising and worshiping God, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Amen. And today's topic is very interesting. It's called Entering the joy of the Lord. Amen. You know, a lot of times you see Christians, Dexter, and they're just boring. They're too strict. <laughs> they're just not fun. You know, and who wants to be a Christian when it is not fun? <laughs> you know, I'm a Christian and I have a zest for life. Amen. Because the Lord has created everything. And, you know, who wants to be a Christian when all the Christians we see, they're like, nobody wants to be like that, right? So we're called to be joyful. And, you know, and, and the Word of God says that a joyful, heart, a joyful heart is good medicine. You don't want to get sick? Have the joy of the Lord. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's in Proverbs 17, 22. And, you know, and... And this is why I said all the nations, because it says in Psalm 66, 1, shout joyfully to God all the earth. So my brothers and sisters from all the earth, join us with a shout of joy to Jesus. Amen. Yes, we love you, Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, it's amazing what God does, you know. 
the last couple of programs, Dexter, we've been talking about repentance and yeah. holiness mm -hmm. and about hell and about all these things. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to live the whole time repenting and hitting myself in the chest. I'm wicked. I'm wicked. No, that's not good. We need to have that's a right. balanced exactly. life. Yep. We need to have balance and we need to rejoice and be a source of happiness, a light for the world. That's right. So now we're going to bring the, all of that into balance. And I would like um, for us to turn to Psalms 51, 6 to 12. Psalms 51, 6 to 12, which is one of an amazing scripture. Amen. Let me read it to you. It says, Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. So here it is where God shows us where we, where, what areas of our lives we need to improve and repent, right? Because we want to be truthful with ourselves. And know where we stand in Christ. And then it says, Purify me with high sup, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Here it is, high sup is soap. Here it is where he cleans us with the blood of Jesus. Amen. But look what it says. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. You know, the Lord breaks us, makes hmm. us repent, brings us into holiness, and then we have to rejoice. Amen? Amen? And look what it says. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Amen. So joy is also part of this process. The joy of the Lord is so important. And that's why I'm so excited because I am all about having fun with the Lord. Yeah. I am. I have that spirit. I have a zest for life. You know, when I accepted Jesus, I wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm kind of wild. And the Lord wants, you know, he knows your personality. When he baptized me the, for the Holy Spirit, I was in Florida, in Homestead, Florida. And they have rows of orange groves. I got so happy, I started running up and down the orange groves because I was so full of joy, Dexter, of the Amen. Lord. Because I felt so clean and so happy. And my heart was just rejoicing in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So tell us about coming into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, let's just open in prayer, too, if yes. we could. Just Father Almighty, Almighty God, maker yes. of heavens and the earth, we just love you. Yes. We come to you and no one else. Yes. No matter what we're going through in our life, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we seek no yes. one else. And Father, today I know you've yes. spoken to us that you're going to release joy unspeakable yes. on people through the Holy Spirit and release many other yes. things as we pray today at near the end. And I'm just so yes. thankful for that, Father. So just open up our eyes to see. Take the bales yes. off of our eyes, Father. Open yes. up our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what yes. you, precious Holy Spirit, have for each one of us today. Yes. In the name above all other names, Jesus yes. the Christ, amen. Amen. Well, I want to um, start out with a little bit of teaching, Marisol, and Amen. from the Word of God, and, and build a little bit of a foundation here, because we are going to pray and activate at the end. That's what we're about. What we have freely received and what the Lord has shown us, we're going to freely give and activate in the body. And this is all about, just so you know, this is not going to be Marisol and I. This is what the Holy Spirit has shown us and what He is hungry to do in the people today. Amen. And that's so important, that we're led by the Spirit and we obey Him and what He wants to do. And for... And, and I'm just going to start with this because it will set the foundation. You know, um, last night, Marisol, you had a dream, mm -hmm. right? 
And in that dream, and I'll, I'll summarize it, and you can fill in some of the gaps because we, we've talked about it a lot today, but this is what the foundation of our teaching is today. And the Lord said, I want you to teach about this. I want you to release this tonight. So this is not just a, a teaching. It's going to be a release of what the Holy Spirit wants to release in your life. But in the dream, there were all these people being thrown on, basically, uh, basically just landing on this dance floor. And what was really neat about it, Marisol, is the dance floor was covered completely in oil. An anointing oil. Anointing oil. I mean, it was just covered completely in anointing oil. And we even and recognized some people that were being thrown in, in amongst the anointing or the Holy Spirit's. And, and as they were thrown on, people were dancing, they were singing, they were laughing, they were full of joy. And then they were released off of the dance floor into their callings. Amen. And, and I don't know about you, but, you know, <clears throat> There's a part in all of our lives, we all go through this, and sometimes we go through this more than once, where we're like a little bit of lost sheep. Where am I, Lord? What about my calling? Why, what, why are all these bad things happening to me? What's going on in my life, Lord? And we, we tend to get bitter, and a root of bitterness comes in, and people hurt us, and they stab us in the back. They betray us. We had close relationships, and they fall apart. And after a while, it's just so easy to just get so bitter and let the root of bitterness come in. And I know one of the things the Lord said today is, I'm going to cut off that root of bitterness in people today and from all the pain and suffering that they've gone through. And Dexter, you know how sometimes when people are in the roller rink and people are in circles and they're like dancing, we were doing that like in the, in the hey, dance man. floor, and then all of a sudden they would get a person and they would just slide, <laughs> them. slide him off. And, you know, together, and it was like that person was released. It was to go released into their into calling. Into their calling, yeah. and everybody did it together in unity, and yeah. everybody was laughing. Yeah. Everybody was just so happy because they were all fulfilling their calling for God, walking in the fullness of God, what God had for them. And they each, you know, the anointing oil was in the floor, and it was like this thick. And, you know, and they each got what they needed. That's and they right. were taken off. And they all had unique callings. And everybody was happy for everybody. Yes. Everybody wasn't competing. That's right. Everybody was very unique. People were in unity. Unity. Yes. yes. And loving each other. That's right. And it was so neat. I was just so happy. And some of them were dancing. And everybody was just so joyful. Amen. And Hallelujah. And it was just a blessing to the Lord. I was like, thank you, Lord, for that wonderful dream. And even in Psalm 133, Marisol, it's joyful to the Lord when we're in unity. I mean, just the, the joy of the Lord is amazing. And so, so as part of this, when we're going through these difficult times, we need what Marisol is describing. We need each other. We need the joy of the Lord. And we need the pa peace that surpasses understanding. And we need to understand these are not things you'll gain in the world. We, every one of us knows what it's like in the world to live by the moment where we're happy one day, things are going well, and the next day, the world seems like it's crashing around us and we're miserable. And sometimes we actually go into depression. And that's not the way we're talking about. We're not talking about happiness because our circumstances are good. See, this joy of the Lord that's being released into us through the Holy Spirit, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit, has nothing to do with our circumstances. Huh. Let that surprise you. The peace and joy of God have nothing to do with your circumstances. Because if it, the whole reason why we're a light to the world is because when we're getting battered and beat up, we have the joy of the Lord and peace that surpasses understanding. People look at you and go, how can you be joyful and happy? How can you still be praising the Lord when everything's falling apart around you? This is the joy that we're talking about. That is, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Without it, we can fall, and we can fall mightily. And if there's not someone next to us to help pick us up and love us and pray with us, we can stay falling a long time. And those of you who are listening, you know what I'm talking about. Because there's very few of us have not gone through the wilderness for a period of our life where we've fallen and we've fallen badly. And we wonder, where is my God? Have you even abandoned me, God? But today we're going to talk about how he never abandons us and how he's going to release into us the joy of his salvation. And, you know, Dexter, it's very easy to be depressed. Very easy. Yeah. You know, and, and you need to walk in joy no matter what your circumstances are. You know, there were times in my life where things were very difficult. 
and people say, oh, go on antidepressant medicine and yeah. Prozac mm -hmm. and Soloft and all that. You don't need that because those medicines are addicting. You get addicted to those things. What you need is to trust in the Lord and say to your flesh, no, no, I will not be depressed. I choose to walk in joy. I choose to know that I know that I know that God is in control. Is it difficult? Yes. But you have to make a choice to be at peace. You know, I just went through a season of a lot of tribulation because my father was very sick. And Dexter can attest to that. Did I ever say I was sad? No. Did I ever say I was depressed? Mm -mm. Did I ever lose sleep? No. no, because I said, Lord, I'm trusting in you. That's right. I didn't stay up all night crying. I did not. I, I made a choice, and I learned that from my mother. She says, your actions speak loud. You can say, I have faith, but your actions speak more. You know, and, and, and it's so important to stand on the word and to stand you know, and to know, like, the fruit of the Spirit, you have to die to yourself, to the flesh, and develop those fruits of the Spirit. And joy Amen. is a fruit of the Spirit, Dexter. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So, <clears throat> and I'm just going to be per perfectly blunt. You cannot have the joy of the Lord if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because of the fruit of the Spirit is joy, patience, love, all those things, mercy, all those things that are the fruit of the Spirit. You will not walk in them if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, you'll be walking in your flesh and you'll do this roller coaster. And one of the greatest signs of whether you're filled with the Holy Spirit, for me personally, is that I'm not doing the roller coaster, no matter what circumstances happen in our life. Amen. And I'm talking about a relative that was, a niece that was raped. I'm talking about her father, where they had him on the life support machine and we were getting a call that it's the end, you need to come I'm talking about those situations that hit us, and they hit every one of us. Because the devil is active trying to destroy us and our families. He's a destroyer. So I'm talking about a joy and a peace that surpasses understanding that is supernatural, that we are desperate and we all need. But in order to have it, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's go to the Word to show that to us. Let's go to, let's start out with... Um, Acts 13, 1 through 4. And, and I'm going to do a little bit of a diversion in the teaching here because I want to make sure this is understood and well known. And that is simply the fact that our lives are built around following or being led by the Holy Spirit, not following what our own flesh thinks is best for the moment or the day. And if we're not being led by the Holy Spirit and filled by the Holy Spirit so that we can know what he's saying to us, we're not sons of God. That's what the Word of God says. We're going to read each one of these scriptures. So I want to make sure, first of all, you understand that in order to live our lives and have joy and have peace, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. In order to do the will of God, you must be led by the Holy Spirit. And let's, let's read what happens when the Holy Spirit is in charge. And let's verify that the Holy Spirit is in charge, first of all. Acts 13, 1 through 4. Now, this is, um, I, I love this scripture because it tells us the Holy Spirit that is in charge. And it, we're not just going to go to this scripture, we're going to go to the next one too. Which is, now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, who's Paul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now, Last time I checked, it's kind of hard to hear the Holy Spirit if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. They sent them away to the work the Holy Spirit had for them. Now, Marisol, in your dream, which I love about the dream, is the fact that everyone was laying hands on each other and then... They, they'd like whisk them off into their calling. And I know it was a fun way for the Holy Spirit to demonstrate that, but he's saying, you know what? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release you into your calling, but you're going to be released in the joy of the Lord and the joy of the Holy Spirit because you're going to be walking in fullness of the Holy Spirit. So you cannot hear the Holy Spirit if you're not filled by him. And you are not a son of God unless you're led by the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 14. And Dexter, when you're doing something that the Holy Spirit tells you to do, it doesn't become a burden. Amen. You know, when, for example, I'm going to be blunt. It's not fatiguing. No, That's I'm right. going to be blunt. Nope. Nope. You know, as a profession, I was a school teacher and, you know, in a, in, in, and I have a master's degree in education. So in the church, you know, people would always ask me, Marisol, do you want to teach Sunday school? And that would just <sighs> deflate me because I didn't want to do that. And it was so, and I would agree to do it. And it would be such a burden because it wasn't God's will for me to do that. I had to learn how to say no to that. Mm -hmm. But then preparing for the TV program and preparing to teach and to walk in the prophetic, it's easy. It's not a burden. So it's not only listening but also saying yes to what the Spirit wants you to do and saying no to Sometimes things that seem good, but are not the perfect will of God in your life. Oh, exactly. Always be led by the Spirit. Yes. All because it looks good doesn't mean that you're calling, exactly. And, you know, and there's a vision in, in the Old Testament where everyone, all, everyone, the army, everyone stays in a line and marches in order and stays in a line. The Lord's been really using that for me lately to say, if you're an evangelist, stay in your line of evangelists. Amen. If you're a teacher, stay in the line of a teacher. If you're a prophet... All because being a prophet is hard, don't you dare abandon that. You stay in the line of being a prophet because a prophet is needed with the evangelist. An evangelist is needed with the teacher. A teacher is needed with the apostle. Every calling is needed, and we all need to work together in unity. And so the Lord just keeps telling me, you know, my body is trying to do what's easier. So if I'm a prophet and I'm being rejected by the church, then I'll, go, I'll just become a pastor of a church instead. Well, no, I'm sorry, but a pastor is a separate calling. 